Welcome to another Reedish Motorsport Underside Restoration on what we believe is turned out to be one of the best restored CSLs in the world. Now, these Millennium Era M Power Specials are incredible machines. They need to be preserved and enjoyed, and to do that, we need to address some of the inherent weaknesses with the E46. RACP, brakes, diff, underbody protection. So join us on a two-hour geek fest where we get extremely detailed during the restoration of BMW's pinnacle E46 model, the M3 CSL. This wonderful silver grey E46 M3 CSL is about to become the next member of the exclusive Reedish Motorsport Underside Restoration Club. It's just arrived from storage and we're going to be getting into a nut and bolt underside restoration. And uh, you can see it's already got a, a film of haze. It's how it's arrived, where it's been in storage. It's got a dust collection on the roof, the windscreen, the bonnet. You can see it in a brown haze and obviously over the rest of the car. So naturally, the first thing we need to do before protecting this vehicle is carry out a safe wash process before we can put the covers on and protect it. We've got the CSL into the workshop now and we're going to start our underside assessment before we start the strip down. So being at a CSL, it's obviously made in late September, sorry, late 2003 um, and it's a obviously a coupe, SMG transmission and it's got 88,000 miles on it. So it's got the standard sort of wear and tear components, whether it be in the drive line for the drive shaft, CV joints, the differential um, and also the quite common nowadays the corrosion factor which is um, present on most of the underside hardware like the trailing arms the diff carrier subframe mounting points v-brace and various other things when you actually zoom in and look closer especially fasteners and fixings chassis itself is looking relatively good very original you see it's got the standard um, sort of dirt and road film underneath there it doesn't look to have been cleaned or tampered with or painted which is excellent that's how we want to see them and how we want to receive them if we're going to be carrying out a, a nut and bolt underside restoration um, but there are um, telltale signs that the car has been worked on and that's in the form of the RACP so as we know that the cars suffer with rear axle carrier panel issues fatigue and stress cracks and pot welds popping or breaking and this car has had uh, a BMW panel repair. So not actually a reinforcement process because BMW don't recognize that. This car has had an entire panel replacement by the looks of things. We can see that because we've got a different textured seam sealer, which has been sort of thrown out more of in a, in a spitting effect compared to the factory sealer. Plus it's a different color on the underside of the RACP. And also we've got a fully sealed joint here at the back where the RACP is then spot welded to the boot floor. So this line here has been fully sealed, which is something that BMW dealers or BMW body shops used to do on nearly all of them that we've seen that they've replaced, which is not ideal because that is a cavity which needs to breathe and also allow moistures to run out of the castellated flutes on that RAC panel. So sometimes you find, once you take the seam sealers off there, you can find corrosion problems, but we'll check all that out, obviously, once we get into the issue. Um, the main other reason why we're gonna need to go in to do some work in there, because some of the paint sealers and, uh, and finishing touches that they've applied haven't fared um, the best over the years that it's been done. I'm not sure what year this was done, but you can see that there's um, corrosion problems breaking through the thin seam sealer, so it's obviously not strong enough, or maybe they painted the underside of the car and then carried out some welding work inside the car, which you do have to do when you're replacing a panel. Um, and I think that possibly because we've got corrosion problems exactly where the plug welds would have to be applied. That one there is the left-hand side start of the boot floor join inside the car and goes all the way across the top. And you can see little bits of corrosion. There's 10 sort of plug weld locations. And it's possible that they might have done some welding after the 
car was sealed and painted underneath, which is why it sort of burnt through some of the paint and then allowed that to corrode. That one there is a plug weld location which starts on the left-hand side chassis leg inside the boot of the car, and that's how the RACP is connected. There's five of them going down that left-hand side in a line. I can only see one that's massively corroded at the moment. The other parts of corrosion are the edges of the panel. So where the panel meets the, where the RACP meets the wheel arch panel, that is another common area. If it's not got a weld through primer on the backs of both of the areas that you're going to be closing up, uh, they seem to corrode terribly, um, even though a BMW approved body shop should have the techniques, the skills and the products to be able to make sure this doesn't repair, uh, it doesn't, sorry, corrode again. It's not happening. We're seeing quite a lot that have had panel replacements from BMW dealers that are simply just re-corroding because the sealants or processes weren't carried out as good as they should have done. There's also corrosion up down the seam sections on the left hand side and on the right hand side. It's not looking too pretty either. It's not really what you want to see, although you would see that would be acceptable if it was say the 18 year old original panel in there. Um, but the fact that it's had a new metal work and it's been carried out um, professionally, you wouldn't want to see that. I'd be horrified if that was one of our repairs and that's because we put so much effort into it we don't get that sort of problem later on so we're going to need to be taking out a lot of seam sealer around the panel that's been worked on previously to understand if there's any other problems that need doing then we've got the typical corrosion on the battery tray boxes which will need to be um, removed we'll speak with the owner to see on a csl we always give the option of putting a new bracket back on um, or reconditioning this one and putting it on. Some people want the originality of the brackets, but we do uh, advise uh, it's better to have those out because they don't serve any purpose at all on the CSL or the M3s. So looking at this angle, you get to see the typical corrosion on the trailing arm, the backing plate. Um, so all those items are gonna be new or replaced because it's having an underside restoration that is a nut and bolt restoration. The hardware, as long as it's in good order, like the subframe, and as long as that's not thin and hold by this corrosion, then that will be reconditioned and powder coated. Um, drive shafts will be new. The differential is going to be overhauled, so that's going to be having a 3.91 ratio with a wave track in it. The exhaust is going to be coated, I believe, uh, plasma coated, zirconium coated, um, new drive shafts. Then the hardware, like the trailing arms and the upper arms, those are going to be recoated. New suspension shock absorbers, um, possibly new camber arms. We'll see what condition these are in. Sometimes they can separate where they're crimped and bonded in these joints here, normally on the inner ones. So we'll see what they're like. So this is um, the sort of arrival video of the condition of things underneath. We'll do a more detailed video once we've got the car stripped down so we can assess the actual chassis itself. You can't see a great amount wrong of it at the moment, but a lot of that area is covered, for example, peeking up into the fuel tank area. You see the front strap bracket has got corrosion on it and seamed corrosion starting to break through the seam joints of the floor pan and the rear bulkhead, which is a shame because that's trapped corrosion. That's area that we're gonna to have to open up and literally dig out. Similar effect with the trailing, uh, sorry, with the jacking points and the side seals, they're starting to break. It's probably been jacked up badly there before, which has split the sealer, which has allowed that corrosion to grow over the years. Um, and also this jacking point is tipped quite badly, which happens commonly on E46s, especially if you're gonna use trolley jacks uh, one at a time because the jacking point internal structure on these E46s is quite weak, so it crushes inside and then add to that effect corrosion risk and it weakens, so that one's gone up. That rear, it sounds drastic, but once that seal cover's off, the end of that metal seal panel will have to be cut off and then we'll have to use our hydraulic special tool system to pull that jacking point internally back out of this cavity, flatten it, and then reinforce it, and then put the weld the end of the seal on. So that's uh, already, that's just, just on average, it's probably a day's worth of work just because of that jet tipped jacking point there alone. So lots of things to be considering and doing. And as with anything, the first stage is to strip this down. So exhaust, um, brake pipes, fuel pipes, rear axle, fuel system, all of the under trays, side skirts, wheels, obviously brakes, everything's gonna be coming off. So we get to see what condition things are in. We've got the fronts here, typical sort of corrosion on the king pins and on the steering tie rods. You can see those have probably been heated 
they're not so bad at this end, probably been heated up here to release them at some stage to allow wheel alignment to carry on. Um, we've got the subframe which has got corrosion on the end of it. Interestingly, we've got the Xenon level sensor which looks all bent, so that's strangely put in a wrong position. Um, yeah, oh, that's all broken anyway. The, that's not uncommon, the drop link's broken and seized, but the bracketry is all bent, so that need a new potentiometer possibly if it's had some form of um, bending going on. Not sure what the plan is for the brakes yet. I'll check with the owner and see if there's going to be any refurbishment, new discs or caliper overhauls, things like that. But um, I think it's got Bill Stein on there, possibly Club Sports, I think. Starting to get a little bit of corrosion on there. I know we've got some new suspension to go on this one. And I'd like to think it would be new. I'd like to think, I'd like to think it would be new, um, new fixings on that underside as well and new plastics and things like that there's plenty of things to be buying from bmw whilst all these are still available some of the plastics are um, good enough to reuse but a lot of the time they're scratched and scuffed and they've got waxes and things like that on them so we've got the csl markings on the exhaust to show the center section and we'll obviously have csl stamping on the top of the box normally on the rears and you can confirm it's a csl because it's got the light to uh, section it's got the holes drilled in the bracketry at the back so that's about the start of the introduction to show what condition an 88,000 mile m3 csl looks like when it comes in to us and now we're going to get everything taken apart assessed and work out what needs replacing what needs refurbishing recoating and uh, and go from there some of the first items have been taken off the CSL now under trays, the exhaust system and the differential. Uh, that's because we need to get those ones uh, dealt with, first of all, because the differential is being rebuilt. Like I said in the intro video, it's been upgraded. Here it is, just come out of the vehicle. So it's been upgraded to a wave track and also a 3.9 ratio. And the exhaust is being uh, ceramic coated by Zerkatech. Our, uh, we're a partner with Zerkatech, so we're having the CSL exhaust, which is all unique to a CSL, as we've pointed out before. The lightweight drilled brackets on the side, about a kilo lighter, the CSL exhaust is. Center section, that's also being uh, re-coated, so it's gonna be a black, I believe it's black, um, performance coating, and also the CSL cat section. Uh, so we've stripped those apart, taken out the Lambda probes, taken off the center mount um, and also the plate and all the rubbers and even the tips as well because we're going to be putting those and building those up later on once it's fully coated and the manifolds as well so nowadays we do the manifolds as part of the underside restoration because they do show corrosion so even once you coat the centers and then put them up to the rusty underside of the manifold it does stand out so nowadays um, we have more people that request the manifold, so we're doing the full sets. So that's five pieces of exhaust system, um, and those are going, like I say, to Zircone Zircotec to be coated. This is what an 88,000 mile E46 M3 CSL looks like. Uh, it's in average condition. It's not got a huge amount of corrosion. It's got typical corrosion problems in common areas, which we'll go and have a look at a bit closely. And, uh, and the elephant in the room is this black section here, which is the, the new RACP that BMW have installed. It's okay, the fitment's okay, uh, the panel lineup's great, um, but that's mostly attributed to the excellent BMW panel stamping processes. Um, the finishing touches are maybe not as best as they could have been. It was done in 2013, so that's approximately eight years ago. We're now 2021. Um, so we're going to have a look, closer look at that, but uh, you can see what I mean by the fact that it stands out. It's not had extended paint to try and blend it into the wheel arches or to the boot floor area. You've got some harsh spray cutoff lines. Uh, some of the black paint actually doesn't even cover the primer or the seam sealer, the gray seam sealer was there. We've got some heavy step lines on the panel overlap as well. That's not ideal normally it would have uh, a little bit of an uh, an overlap with seam sealer brushed seam sealer about an inch thick um, or an inch wide should i say just making sure that the panel joins are covered so that no water moisture and things like that can creep in but like i say the fitment's great absolutely touches the underside of the um, the boot floor and the wheel arch sections in great detail. Um, so the boot floor itself is in good order. There's never really anything 
much wrong with these. Um, they're always quite good. Sometimes we get corrosion on the exhaust hangers, which there is a little bit on the right hand side up there. And then the battery box area, this one is normally quite corroded. It's a little bit starting on the inside edges. So it is what we call a corrosion trap and we will want to take that off. And the two brackets up here, they're not even used on an M3. It's only the 330 and lower models that need that for the carbon canister to go in. Um, we'll speak to the owner and find out if they want that replicated, i.e. these ones put back on to make it look completely OEM, uh, or whether they can um, live with that one off, which to be honest, every single one we've taken off, every owner's wanted it off, but we're happy to work either way. If somebody wants us to, um, to spot weld one of those back on, we will do. Sometimes around the grommets, we've got corrosion, which we have just there, and a little bit of corrosion staining through here, might be stone chip issues, and again, around that grommet just around there. And then moving on to the RACP, we've got a similar overlap up here. There's more seam sealer on this right hand side. You can't see the step so obviously, but it, uh, it's, still, it's still visual, uh, whereas the BMW seam sealer would have been a bit thicker than that. Up here, it's just seam sealer. It hasn't got any paint on it. So what looks to have happened is that they would have uh, probably put a form of primer on it. They might have just gone into seam sealer. Um, and I'll talk about that over here in a minute. After the seam sealer, which is sprayable, much more coarse texture from a, a body shop or main dealer approved body shop um, than the factory finish. The factory finish seemed to be applied warm, we believe, so it, it flowed a lot nicer. So although it was textured, it was, it was smoother, whereas this is a lot more coarse. It's sprayed out of a, a compressor because at the end of the day, this is a factory finish where they've got equipment and budgets that can give you applications that simply dealer level um, body shops just can't match I'd imagine. So we've got a seam sealer finish up here and then we've got a black overpaint over the grey seam sealer. That's why we're seeing grey section of seam sealer which is under there. Um, moving round to the mounting points. Now this is where it starts to get a bit more interesting because not only is it not very nice to look at, this patchy black spray paint uh, showing the grey seam sealer underneath in various areas. But we've got two, if not three big problems here. The first one is we've got a very shiny RACP exposed here, where somebody's probably taken the diff out previously, and I will remark this isn't us. Um, the seam sealer is peeling off very easily. It's a very flexible seam sealer, which hasn't adhered very nicely to the panel. So it's very easy to, to come off, even with gloves on. Um, secondly, it's it's, completely shiny, which is exactly how they come from factory. So if you've ever bought a replacement panel or specifically an RACP, you'll know that this black finish, which is a, a sort of a cathodic dip finish, is, is black and quite shiny. This has to be keyed up to uh, with a scotch bright or even removed, but keyed up will be adequate and then primed and then seam sealed so to give some uh, addition layer to it. And that's where I think this has gone wrong. They haven't keyed this up, so that's why the seam sealer hasn't adhered properly. Plus it probably isn't uh, the best of seam sealers. I can't quite tell if this is genuine BMW. I don't think this is a BMW sealer. I've seen many different dealer uh, level body shops and dealer approved body shops use different sealers. Now the BMW sealer that they use at dealer approved body shops is very tough and very good and a little bit smoother than this. Um, whereas this looks possibly like something different. So that's not gonna last forever. Uh, we're eight years on, it hasn't uh, completely failed yet but it isn't gonna last the test of time. Now, the second problem we've got with this is the fact that across the rear of the RACP, we've got corrosion coming around in even spacings and quantities, uh, which is exactly in the location of where the spot welds would have been drilled out in the boot floor section. Let's just turn around and show you where we are. So this is the back of the vehicle and there's the start of the RECP. The boot floor section will start on that spot weld there, and there's 10 of them that go all the way across to that one there. You drill them out to release the RECP to replace it, and then when you put the new one back in, RECP that is, you would then plug weld through those boot floor holes to connect the RECP to the boot floor. Um, and in doing so, they seem to have disturbed possibly some primer. Now I can't say for sure, but it's possible they may have seam sealed the underside and then gone inside later on, or even forgot, and later on done the plug welding, which is burnt through the seam sealing that might have been applied first underneath. Because in all other, most other locations, down the right-hand side chassis leg, five spot welds across the seat panel front, and then the other five down here, we haven't got much, if any, corrosion. 
there's a ton of spot welds across the front of the seat panel and they're not affected so it's like these ones have been done in the wrong order burnt through the seam sealer which is then of course only corroded because out in the atmosphere even if it doesn't have water touch it the atmosphere just has a moisture in there um, and that's going to cause corrosion and that's why we've got it in even quantities going along so this isn't good because you can see if you add to the fact that the sealer hasn't adhered properly anyway and the point the fact that it's possibly broken where the welding might have been done at a wrong time span we've got trapped corrosion which although it's only trapped under the seam sealer in this case and means just bare metal in that area it's still corrosion on brand new metal and the whole idea of having a new RACP at BMW was the fact that it was then going to be an OEM quality and finish and hopefully last as long as the rest of the components because although it was a fatigue issue why these were replaced they always had surface corrosion in certain areas and it was a very nice thing to get rid of that corrosion but that is an application issue which like I say spreads across to the left hand side as well and you can see some of the dust coming out of here and I don't see any other reason why that would have corroded in oh that's nasty that's now far wider than just the circular spot weld that would have been replaced with a plug weld this is this is corrosion which is growing it's actually traveling in many directions and that's why we're seeing large sections now the plug weld or the spot weld that they would have drilled out was eight mil wide and therefore the welding circle the plug weld the rosette weld whatever you want to call it to replace it would have been similar by the time you've actually overlapped the parent metal and you've got a bit of a heat affected zone you might get 10 12 mil wide circle if it was applied properly but these aren't circles these are oblongs this is corrosion tracking and moving which um which is not nice we can solve it but um that's in a, a central section where there's no overlapping panels now if we go to the edge of the panel where the racp was uh welded into the other parts of the car so for example the wheel arch panel we've got quite an issue with spot uh, corrosion breaking out around the outer edges either where seam sealer hasn't been applied to stop water moisture and ingress effect going in or whether there was bare metal left on the outer part of the RACP and the inner part of the wheel arch panel and I want to say bare metal that would be needed to carry out an effective uh, and penetrative plug weld process all the way along this edge but it should have had a weld through primer and what I'm seeing is probably not weld through primer being used because there's no reason for this corrosion after eight years to be in this location because this corrosion here is some of the strongest on the vehicle um, and this is a, a panel that's been replaced so it's a new piece of metal which shouldn't have that corrosion you know there's other parts of the vehicle that are under the car that get constant water if it was raining for example like this chassis leg is a hot spot on the right hand side on an e46 and there's only a tiny bit of corrosion happened on there but then take a panel that's eight years old half the age of this csl and it's got tons more corrosion so if it's just the outer parts of the flange so that would be the recp that i'm touching there and the wheel arch panel i'm touching here that wouldn't be a problem we could bare metal it the problem is these are two panels that have come together and therefore internally between that panel and that panel there is likely to be trapped corrosion similar to this you can see the overlap there there's the join line of the racp and up in there there may be trapped corrosion who knows the only no the only way to to do that is to effectively open the seams but that's not straightforward when you haven't got spot welds to drill out because remember this isn't a spot welded panel anymore this would have been a mig welded panel so that's different you don't find the identification markers so we need to think about that process and wonder what's going on if it will affect our work and how we best get around that um, there's other areas here evidence of non or poor preparation around the mounting points where Again, the uh, RACP hasn't been keyed up. This is the black paint that it comes with from the dealers when you buy the panel. And therefore that's why stuff hasn't adhered to it very well. Um, you can see just by rubbing it, I can just remove the seam sealer. This is not good. And that's why where the bush has been touching, uh, bear in mind only the bush concentration lips, which are very thin one there and one there actually touch. But uh, 
there's sections of the seam sealer that have just been rubbed away from the fact of the movement and the twist and the articulation of the subframe and therefore the bushes as well. So that's uh, a shame. And then we've got two other massive corrosion points which stand out like a sore thumb. This is when the fuel tank rubs on the RACP. Now the fuel tank lives in this area here, goes from that strap bracket across to that bolt there and the other one from there to there. And now it's clamped up to the underside of the seat panel but does rest on the RACP but it should never touch it. It sits on uh, a rubber or foam, sorry, foam pad. And those foam pads have got shapes where they should stick to on the top of the fuel tank. The fuel tank's recessed for them to sit into. And that's so that there's always a buffage so it never is plastic tank on um, bare metal or sealer because the tank obviously holds 50, 55, whatever it is, litres, 60 litres. And there is going to be some movement. It's only held in three points, one strap on the right, one on the left, and a nut in the middle. It's quite a heavy thing when it's got fuel in it and therefore during motion driving and especially track work it's going to move about so that it has to be isolated by foam pads so where the tank was replaced taken out and then reinstalled during the RACP work or whoever last had it out should we say has forgotten to put those foam pads back in and therefore the plastic fuel tank has been rubbing touching and resting on the RACP, rubbed clean through the seam sealer, which wasn't hard anyway, and then caused a bare metal issue, which is why then they've gone quite rusty. So that's another point that we need to get onto as well. So there's a fair few things. At the moment, most of our work cutout looks to be due to the RACP replacement, things that need tidying up or maybe even redoing. We've got areas up in the rear trailing arm pocket. So they've done the RACP all the way to the front by the looks of it around this line here up there and around the back of there certain bits of corrosion that are coming around nothing too major at the moment but we haven't degreased it yet you can see there's still a dirt and mud on the underside we need to degrease that that's not nice that corrosion down the back of there so that's going to need to be taken out we might even have to replace the pocket um, then going on to the underside seal section and the v-brace mounting boxes well they've commonly got corrosion on them and the seal sections do as well where the jacking points are these are always seem to be breaking out with corrosion. Um, even if there's just like a little bit of shown there, it's the corrosion growth in between the layers of metal, in between the floor pan, the inner seal and the quarter panel, which is this part effectively lapping round to meet the jacking point, where they're all spot welded together, three of them, and there's a big MIG weld in here. BMW seam sealed it up, but there's obviously moisture that must get in there or come out from the uh, seal sections where it's trying to come out of the ventilation lines, which are there which looks like it's almost full up with wax. So that's probably why that's not happening. And then that corrosion just keeps on growing and growing. And when corrosion grows, it physically expands. And then sometimes the seam sealer can't hold it back. So the seam sealer breaks, and then you start to see that nasty corrosion. And by that time, it's been in there years and it's growing. So we need to open up this joint. And we're not talking about just the surface. We need to possibly remove the MIG weld belt sand that off and, and literally prise open the lower seal section here along this line to dig out this corrosion and make sure there's nothing too sinister in that area. Um, jacking point on this side is collapsed as well which isn't uncommon on an E46. This plastic or rubber pad which stays in the car there's four of them and that's what you lift the cars up on. Now they should be horizontal and um, and what can happen if you, especially if you use trolley jacks regularly, the weight of lifting the car or even the side of a car up on one jacking pad um, can crease the internals. They, it's part of poor design from BMW anyway. They're very weak internally, only spot welded with a two mil plate. So that needs to be uh, rectified and reinforced. So the only way to do that is cut the end of this seal panel off uh, use a special hydraulic tool that we've got an 18 ton hydraulic system that bolts into the under the chassis and pulls down with hydraulic pressure to straighten the internal jacking point structure. Then we add a reinforcement process and weld that in to stop it happening again and then straighten the seal section and then re-weld that end of the seal back on. So that's quite a lot of fabrication work. It needs to happen on the right hand side. Left hand side isn't too bad, it's still straight but sometimes people need a pair doing or they want to done if one's broken the other ones may follow it for example a little bit of seal corrosion starting to break through just up here as well um, v-brace jacking uh, mounting box this is quite comical this has been put around the wrong way this is again probably the guys that did the bmw racp these are the uh wiring boxes for 
the ABS sensor on the left hand side and the fuel tank is in here and the fuel tank is super close to these boxes um, and they've put it around the wrong way so the door is opening in reverse at the moment so if you're sort of got the fuel tank here and you're looking in this area you can't get the door open because the fuel tank is here to get access to this plug which would have been in there to disconnect the ABS sensor that should be fitted around the other way so the door opens hinges that side opens that side so when you're stood here you can get access to the plug and do it so we'll solve that and turn that around for them um, you can see in this area where they've replaced the uh, RACP you can see the join line up here there's a gap there and a gap there a little bit of corrosion what's that ah oh, no nah broken seam sealer so that's not good a bit of corrosion there and around the outside of the pocket now there's not much corrosion around the pocket itself but it's not got much sealer on I don't like the fact that you can feel the panel edge because anything can get in there salt can sit on there mud wet mud um, and uh, it's not an ideal solution so that needs much more seam sealer around there and they've missed the MIG weld so that cutout is for a factory MIG weld to be applied to hold the our, tra our tab pocket into the front left corner of the rear trailer RACP that needs filling up with weld um, but there's corrosion around the back of it which uh, probably is where some water sprays up and hits it so that needs dealing with that's the other fuel tank corrosion problem here even these are brand new brackets so, you know they only come on the RACP uh, most people would die for brand new brackets here. Doesn't matter though, because now 2021 Reader Schmutzbot ourselves have replicated all of these common six brackets. So we sell these in a package. Just give us a call or email us if you want to buy some for your restoration. But look at them already. The edges of them going corroded only after eight years. That's a shame because they're now looking as old as some of the other brackets, which are actually 17 years old. So how does that work? Well, that's because it's non quality protected it's got this seam sealer which is inadequate not keyed up and it isn't enough and it's not got any wax inside just the edges are poor so all that needs uh, sorting out then the underside is well relatively straightforward actually most of that is uh, in a standard condition as we'd expect to find a car that's been untouched underneath we've always got that common heavy wax line which where the cars drove over a factory applied wax process to coat the underside brake pipes and the fuel pipes and that um, always then holds the dirt because it stays waxy all its life it's got 18 years worth of dirt stuck on that wax which is why it's concentrated dark there whereas this is typical of the underside of the color um, that will clean up quite well once we start doing our degrease which we haven't even done this is just the initial assessment once we've stripped the car down um, we'll find that that's probably quite clean underneath there'll be some minor bits of corrosion like we've seen just now on the right hand side of the chassis leg here couple of little areas that are starting to give concern and also in this seam joint here so this is where the floor pan finishes and where the bulkhead at the rear starts going up for the fuel tank area we've got some corrosion trying to break out from that seam there which is um, trapped corrosion so we need to go into that area and on the edges of this reinforcement plate and then plus the fuel tank brackets which need to be replaced I'd say um, the rest of it as we go towards the front I'd imagine will be like most cars where they're quite original and quite good obviously dirty so we'll check and come back and inspect this area a little bit closer once we've been degreasing the underside of the car and then we can really see if there's anything we've not noticing just yet but that's the initial first assessment of the CSL strip down. If you're enjoying this video please do like subscribe and hit the bell to get notified of upcoming videos. Here's all the items that will be powder coating for the CSL. Obviously not the diff, but we're just laying it out to give you a perspective of how it looks on the vehicle. So we've got front axle items up there, rear axle items here, things from the roll bar, the carbon canister, bracketry as well, the subframe, trailing arms, upper arms, no lower arms because we've obviously got a CSL aluminium piece with the ball joints press in, um, V-brace, tank straps, push rod, exhaust center, section, supports, uh, gearbox cross member, fuel tank cover, front reinforcement plate, front subframe, front kingpins, front roll bar, brackets and then we've also got the new BMW items, there's six new pieces here, that's the rear brake backing plates, the front brake backing plates and also the rear trailing arm cradles. Now we go for those for new because uh, the old ones are very flimsy and thin and don't seem to hold up very well to being powder coated because it's a thin sheet of steel and the front ones are actually aluminium so we always go for new ones and then we re-powder coat those because these have got some sort of cathode dip um, finish on them which is quite thin 
So we make sure we powder coat on top of those to give them a longer lifespan. So there's lots of pieces here. They'll all be going away for media blasting and then powder coating in the OEM colors next. Fast forward several days later and technician Dave's been uh, non-stop using the wire wheel equipment to remove seam sealer and corrosion on the underside of the CSL, mainly concentrating at the rear. So we start at the boot floor back section and remove anything that uh, is either loose corrosion and loose seam sealer, which there wasn't a huge amount on this car compared to some, but we had the typical battery tray issues up on this side here where that bracket seems to always corrode and is not even needed. So that first of all gets removed. And then the other two brackets that are up there as well, they come off and the owner doesn't want those put back on, so they'll stay off. And then we've got the loose corrosion and seam sealer that always uh, builds up around the, uh, the um, exhaust hanger brackets. And then even just onto small, tiny little areas like the little tabs from the grommets here, the 20 mil metal grommets that are coming through the boot floor. Any tiny little bit of corrosion has to be dealt with. And in some cases, those grommets don't survive and the tabs are too weak or they come loose and then we have to take them out and replace them for rubber ones or something similar like the melted ring ones. Um, so as well as corrosion removal and bare metalling, what we're also doing is scuffing and removing certain BMW high seam sealer, sort of the messy seam sealer, where it's a bit brushed on by a human to make sure it gets into some of the traps. Um, so it's sprayed on by a robot and then humans come along and brush in certain locations that the robot couldn't guarantee to seal. And then in some areas, they, they finish wiping their brush to get the excess off in hidden areas like in the fuel tank and just in the wheel arches. So we're sort of cutting down on those areas to try and make a smooth finish. So when we apply our sprayable seam sealer, it's gonna be nice and flat and not have that sort of bobbly finish that BMW and the roughness that BMW was known for in certain areas. But you can also see here, we've had to remove um, almost all of the seam sealer, well, yeah, everything of the seam sealer from the new RACP rear axle carrier panel because we proved in the previous video that hadn't been keyed up correctly and therefore the sealer was very weak. It hadn't adhered greatly and it was easy to knock off. So we've taken all of that off and we're going back to the bare metal of the RACP, which as it comes from BMW is black. And in many areas, we've had to bare metal through that if we're concerned about the finish on that black. And in the other areas, we'll key that up with scotch Sprite and things when we move on to the process later on. But we're going into the uh, fuel tank housing area as well, which is up here and the rear trailing arm pockets. We'll just go a bit closer and have a look. You can see the amounts of areas that have had to be bare metaled under the car, which is quite a challenge when you think you're constantly working above your head for hours and hours every single day and multiple days um, as you go through this process. And there's areas here we still need to go into. We haven't yet gone into the jacking points. You can see there's corrosion sort of almost showing its caught between the V-box area, the inner seal and the quarter panel. And then we've got some areas up here that are trying to re-rust, which gives us an indication that there's some heavier corrosion up there, which needs to be tackled again and then chemically treated. Um, going over to the left-hand side, we've got steel corrosion to do where we've got to go out into the seal section here. So at the moment we're up to this sort of area, which is what we call the fuel tank housing area, but it incorporates the rear trailing arm pocket section, which is part of the front of the rear axle carrier panel. Um, even though there is a factory join line there, the panel comes with these pieces and some dealers fit them and some don't. This dealer did, so it's a whole piece that's been replaced. So there's lots of things to, um, to go into. Underside work, we're just about starting that down the left-hand side, as you can see, down the transmission tunnel supporting bracket, starting to bare metal that. Even though it doesn't look bad, compare it to the right-hand side, not bad at all, but when you actually get closer, you can see that there's minor amounts of corrosion present and some of the uh, e-coat has been compromised in areas which is not corroded yet, but it's compromised. So that means it's growing underneath the e-coat finish. So that's the only, re uh, the only option for that is bare metal in it, like this side, so that we can get um, back to bare metal and then start the process of protecting the chassis all over again. Because ultimately that's what's happening. The protection isn't lasting long enough. Uh, the car is, what is it, 17 years old, I think, on average and it's doing well, it's holding up well, but there are areas that are starting to degrade. So we're having to start that process again to give the car um, another lifespan, basically. And then up in the arches, we've got some sort of corrosion that we're starting to see 
in the inner arches. Now the CSLs have got a unique arch, which we discovered many years back, and, have, and since then we've replicated the CSL arch on offer to normal E46s. So normal E46s have a, a quite a wide channel, a U-shaped channel, where the quarter panel and the inner arch are folded 180, and they create a channel, which is a big trap for mud and water and things like that to grow in. Whereas the CSL, because of the bigger, different offset wheels and the wider tires, they had a folded flat arch. And the way BMW sort of robots sort of folded that arch, the outer quarter panel, they folded it completely flat. The only way to manage that was basically to cut the inside inner arch short. So the inner arch isn't present underneath that fold. It's finished short and then they bond those two pieces together. There's no spot welding, like the normal M3s are spot welded across that joint, whereas the CSLs are just bonded together at that panel joint. And therefore you can get corrosion problems. So we're just gonna bring the lift down and we're just gonna show you a little bit closer what we're finding. Um, so we've got some corrosion color where we started taking off the seam seal and we've got back to bare metal. This lip just above my glove now is the quarter panel, which is the outside of the car, where it's coming around and, and turning 180 and then folded flat. And then this piece that I'm touching now is the inner panel. You can see the difference in depth here. This is the inner arch panel and the one that I'm touching there is the back of the quarter panel or the outer panel, if you will. And it's just folded flat, but we've got corrosion. We could see that breaking through the seam sealer slightly in a color. So we've investigated that and we can see that there's some corrosion and it still looks like it's present because it starts from inside that joint and it travels outwards, not the opposite way. So if you're seeing corrosion in here or even tiny little pinholes um, or pimples where the corrosion is, um, has been eating the metal, there's some risk elements. So that has to be investigated because if we were to just seal over it, there's a risk that it would simply grow again and come back. Even though we'd be sealing it probably better than the factory, uh, so nothing could get in and we'd be extensively cavity waxing inside this area, which was different to BMW. They seem to just put like one little squirt in there, but we'd be extensively cavity waxing in this channel. So which means that corrosion is less likely to grow, but still we don't really want to leave corrosion anywhere. So that's the whole idea of these processes. So there's a lot of work to go on in the arches as well as working out if there's any corrosion and removing it. We also have to be um, treating the good seam sealer that's gonna stay. This is BMW seam sealer, but as you can see, it's been scuffed up to make not only an adhesion, uh, promote some adhesion, but also to smooth off areas because it's quite a thick system and quite random with brush strokes in it. So we try and flatten that off as best as possible. Um, and the left-hand side, similar but actually a bit more corrosion. So if you see on this left hand side, we've got between here, between my fingers now, we've got a difference to the metal, it looks different. So this is good metal up here, which is completely flat and um, bare metal. So it's, it's perfect metal. Whereas all this area here is uh, sort of corroded metal where it's got um, pin, well not pin holes, but it's got sort of uh, dimples in it where the corrosion has probably been growing for a while underneath that arch lip. So the only way to get that is to steadily cut back at this arch, sort of five or 10 mil at a time, and then see if there's any corrosion in there and then effectively remove it. And, uh, and sometimes you have to keep going. We've done several CSLs and the only way to do it, if you don't want to have to replace the quarter panel and the inner arch panel, the only way to do it is start opening this joint along this lip and removing the corrosion. And then once you've got it all out, then treating the metal, and then carrying out the processes. So lots to do and lots to think about. And um, that's where we are now, gonna carry on with the wheel arch processes. Starting the investigation cuts on the CSL arch. And we were right to do this, because as we expected, I've cut in a small lip, first of all, off of the inside rolled edge of the quarter panel. Um, you can see it's just full of corrosion underneath, which didn't look like that previously when we were looking at just this section, we could see there was corrosion color coming out from the joint, but I don't think anybody would have ever thought that was trapped inside the CSL wheel arch. And this is the right hand side of the car. This one looks better than the left. So I think we're gonna find the similar, if not worse on the left. So there's just an amount of corrosion, which is, um, which is either loose metal or I'm not quite sure what, but we know that these arches are bonded together. So what we now need to do is pick all this corrosion out and actually get to the bottom of it stopping. So what that means is we're gonna to have to now do another cut 
further down until we find good metal because we don't want any corrosion and at the moment we can get rid of this that we've exposed but we can't get rid of what's under here so that's why we need to going to keep cutting um, it's unfortunate but that's about the only way to do it so cutting some more of the lip off and that exposes we've gone past the lowest point of the inner panel and this describes perfectly how a CSL inner arch is different to the others. Uh, so the inner panel, normally on a normal E46, whether it be a 316 or an M3, this inner panel continues all the way down to the bottom of here, and then it gets folded 180 and comes back up on itself. Now on a CSL, very similar to the E39 M5 style, the, dealer, uh, the factory cut the inner arch short, so that's the lower factory cut line there of the inner arch, and then the outer arch was the one that only got folded round because obviously it's easier to fold one panel flat back on itself rather than two panels. And then what they did, because their two panels weren't really touching each other or there wasn't any way to get behind the piece here to do any factory spot welds to hold the two pieces together, then they bonded them together. So this is what this material here is. It's a bonding agent, a panel bond adhesive. You can see this sort of, um, sort of colouring of it, some of it's black there, the honeycomb nature of it, and some of it's gone rusty, obviously, but that's the bonding agent there that joins the two pieces together, and then it was sealed with the inner arch sealant to make it weatherproof. So what we've done is carried out our cut, we've taken out the same amount of material all the way round, uh, but it shows that the factory arch cut wasn't straight, it's not that we have cut more off of this end, we've cut the same amount, but it just follows the line differently. And that's exposed the inner arch, which is quite corroded. This piece here, which has got loose corrosion on it, which otherwise, if we hadn't have done this, that would have all been trapped and probably would have regrown. But what we now need to do is get the rest of this bonding material out, if we can. You can see it's already fallen out of this section here. And then there's a channel down in this section where there might be some corrosion, but hopefully not because the back of that panel looks quite good, doesn't it? That's still e-coat color. And we're hoping down in here, which we'll use mirrors for, we're hoping that that's corrosion free down in there because then that would save having to cut so much more of this inner, uh, sorry, the outer return lip off. Um, and if, if what we've proved is correct, then it's just the inner section that's corroded. And now we've exposed that joint here, we can now, remove that loose corrosion, treat it with some metal preparation chemical, and then be assured that we're not trapping any corrosion in. So quite a difference to the last time we saw this. Previously, we had a huge amount of corrosion that was eating the inner arch panel, which is this one here. Um, as you can see, we've conservatively removed the least as possible out of this lower lip, um, which has remained still quite a strong piece and probably about half of its original height, but we've uh, managed to clear out the corrosion that was in between these joint sections where the old bonding glue, the panel bond adhesive uh, was in there joining the two together. And we can obviously replace that, but what we've been doing is being able to get this panel to bare metal and make sure that there isn't any hidden or trapped corrosion, whether it be behind this inner piece or behind this or in the lip of the outer piece. And we're pretty, confident we still haven't finished yet this is just an update video part way through but we're very confident that we've actually saved this wheel arch and made sure that it isn't going to be re-corroding again because with our techniques of pour 15 metal prep and then primers bonding agents sprayable seam sealers and cavity waxing i think we're going to be very uh, confident that this won't pose a problem to this arch again any longer we still need to weld on a stud up here you can see where previously somebody had bonded a bolt on, a hex shape, but that didn't work. So we'll have to uh, do a weld a stud on in that location. And we're gonna have to investigate this area, the join between the, there's no um, weld or spot weld joints between the inner and the outer panel here. It's just sealer. And we're just gonna have to decide if there's any corrosion in this area or whether that is just a discolored seam sealer. Um, but we're really happy with the progress on this right hand side rear wheel arch on the CSL restoration. And this is the lip that we've just taken off. It's part of the quarter panel, effectively. It's the piece that's on the inside after it's been folded 180 degrees. This is the area that we could see and access by bare metal in it and removing the seam sealer. And if you looked at that and didn't really know what you were looking at, you would say, yeah, that's clean metal, it looks great. But what was trapped on the back of it 
There was a horrendous amount of corrosion, and that's exactly why we had to cut it out, because there was no other way of removing that corrosion. So on the CSL on the right hand side rear jacking point, uh, the jacking point we found had creased uh, as they do internally um, and it had become non-horizontal to the floor. So it actually internally creased which meant it had to be pulled down and then also reinforced. So uh, we didn't actually manage to get on video the actual process of hydraulically pulling that down with our special tool that we made. But I'm going to insert a clip here which shows how we do that. Now the outer seal has been cut out, you can see the deformation inside and we've got the special tool set up which is basically a carrying system and support arm connected to the chassis and then that holds our hydraulic cylinder which is an 18 tonne hydraulic cylinder obviously connected to a hydraulic um, push rod system which will actuate that. So just before we do I'm just going to show, I'm going to try and steady the camera in one position so that we can actually see it happening in real time. So it goes probably somewhere about there. I'm just going to use a measure, a steel rule, to the corner of that piece there. I know it's not perfectly in line, it's a bit of an angle, but we're probably about 29 millimetres from the, gap, the corner of the jacking point, which we're aiming to bring down to the actual support bar up here. So um, I think we're ready to go. We could start um, pumping this and bring it down. A very, very effortless very easy you can see the b pillar that was creased is now coming down really nicely uh, still got a small crease in there but we can improve that with reinforcement work and now that's come down quite a lot and without moving the camera angle or position if i put that onto the same corner which is there we're probably at about 19 18 so we've come about 10 to 11 millimeters down which is now very near flat and we'll just put the camera down and do some final checks but that just goes to show how effortless it is with the hydraulic system ready for our reinforcement work later on. So you can see it was a straightforward process once the seal section is cut out an access hole in there we install the special tool pull this internal jacking structure down hydraulically get it then parallel to the ground which is where it once used to be and then that straightens out that broken section or creased section of internal jacking structure because it's only a, a pressed steel component, it's not very thick. And then we carry on reinforcing it. So we've welded the two together. Normally it just relies on two spot welds. So we've welded and joined that together. And then we've also installed a reinforcement box section in there, welded the cross there, and also up in the section, which is harder to see up in here, a triangulation, so that that system now cannot tip anymore. It can't crease. And then we obviously need to weld in the seal section that we previously cut out, reinforce the underside three layer connection just here, um, and then we'll be moving on to some of the final corrosion removal work underneath this chassis. If you're enjoying this video, please do like, subscribe, and hit the bell to get notified of upcoming videos. Now we're gonna start the stud welding process on the inside of the wheel arches. Quite a specialist process. Um, up in here, there are studs from factory that uh, are coarse studs, for self-tapping threads to go onto, nuts to go onto, to hold the bumper clips, which then connect to the bumper, which hangs here, to stop it dropping or spreading outwards. Now, lot of, often these snap off, and this car came in with two replacement studs, which were bolts, hex bolts, that had been bonded on. Um, and the bonding was not strong enough, and as soon as we put a tool on the nut to undo the nut, the entire bonding system failed that had been previously used by somebody and therefore the stud fell off. So we're going to do the proper official BMW route or any manufacturer's route which is um, stud welding using a stud welding system. So it's basically like a spot welding machine. There's the spot welding system and then there's a gun attachment which is where you put the, um, the end of the fixing. You can use coarse cut threads, you can use M4, M5, M6. They do them all the way up to M8, I think. And we're gonna be using that system to replicate the BMW one. But because the car is obviously painted, it's uh, not long come from the body shop, we're gonna put a specialist heat gel, which Dave's gonna apply now, onto the paint so that when the heat goes into that cavity, we're gonna be hopeful that it doesn't cause any issues to the outside paint. So it's a special, heat gel um, which try is made for the automotive industry to apply when you are working with heat whether it be naked flames or welding and things like that so the earth's on and the gun's in position we're just setting up to find the right position 
um, the studs in and then when we're happy we just pull the trigger we're just lining it up and then it should then just weld the stud on just like that so it doesn't look much or sound much but that is uh, I think it's resistance welding the official terminology and that stud then is so secure um, you'd actually have to hammer that and it wouldn't break off we've been doing testing on similar panels one 1 1.2 uh, mil thick steel and uh, and even plate work and you actually have to hammer them apart and even then it doesn't split it all it does is bend the metal so it's very quick but very effective and a very strong process after several days of bare metal in certain areas on the chassis, uh, surface corroded areas and some that are stronger corrosion, we're now at a point where the whole car is bare metalled in, uh, in the areas it needs to be. Original sealer that's strong and stable and non-corroded stays in place, but the areas that were concerning edges of panels, brackets, overlapping panel joints, all those areas will need to be bare metalled. So where we are now is up at the near side front, left front uh, wheel arch area. You can see up here is the turret where the shock absorber and top mounts bolt up to. This is a chassis leg area and the inner wheel arch where it protrudes towards the front bumper area. And now we're going to be painting the or brushing on the chemical, which is a special chemical made by Pore 15, which is called um, Pore 15 Metal Prep, which is a slightly blue coloured chemical which um, which neutralizes corrosion. So it's a liquid, which does seem very odd to be brushing a liquid uh, onto a bare metal surface, but it's specially formulated to neutralize corrosion and give it a zinc phosphate finish. So the metal has then a better adhesion layer on it, ready for the next stage of protection, which is arguably the first layer, um, which is gonna be uh, obviously an etch primer which has to go onto the bare metal. So we have to do it in stages, and this is why we're up in the, the wheel arch section first. It can't all be done in one go on the vehicle because this chemical has to stay wet uh, for 30 minutes. So it does try to dry out. It's a very hot day in the summer here in the UK anyway. So this would be dry within five minutes. So you have to be doing smaller sections and you have to keep topping it up. So it would be continuously making sure that this area remains wet. You don't want it to dry. It has to stay wet for 30 minutes and then it can be washed off. Now it never should dry, it gets washed off with a, a warm, um, slightly damp microfiber which then takes all of that coating off but the chemical reaction has happened by that point so any corrosion it's found will be neutralized and sometimes it turns to a darker color, it's basically a rust converter so it will turn to a, if there is any pitting in any metal grain work, heavier stuff, it will turn to a, a black sort of color um, but like I say it also coats it with a zinc phosphate finish which is extremely good and resilient to um, to atmospheric corrosion you don't find that they re-corrode so we'll then go over this area for like I say another 30 minutes making sure it's done and then move on to the right arch and then other sections in the vehicle. There's about 12 sections of the vehicle we, we divide it up into to make sure that nothing ever dries and we're keeping it going for 30 minutes. And over the course of a day, this whole car will be effectively chemically treated. Now we've gone through the car completely uh, and bare metal the corroded areas and treated them with the chemical items that you've seen previously from Port 15 that we use. And then, stabilizing that uh, that bare metal. We've now put the car into a primer state, which is uh, keeping it safe from any atmospheric rust or corrosion hazing that can build up just in the, uh, in the atmosphere, and also preparing it for the sprayable seam sealer process, which will be coming up quite shortly. We're very much at that stage now where the car has been gone through from right from the back of the car, boot floor, battery tray, RACP, wheel arches, Trailing arm pockets, fuel tank area, central underside, chassis legs, front underside, chassis legs and wheel arches and turrets. And we're happy that corrosion has been removed um, and we're now stabilizing the vehicle to, um, to go forward with the sprayable seam sealer. So what we're doing here is just feeding a small amount of seam sealer into certain areas that were a little bit poor previously. So remember this card had an RACP from BMW under a warranty program, so the whole new RACP had been replaced. And the sealer they'd used on that wasn't very well adhered, it was a little bit loose, and also there were some gaps where the welding had taken place, where it was welded into the wheel arch panels, the boot floor panel, 
the seat panel and especially the trailing arm pockets, there were problems in those areas where there were gaps where sealer wasn't rolling nicely over the edges, like here from the trailing arm pocket to the RACP. It was stepped, so it wasn't really given much weather protection. There was also MIG welds missing down there, which have been now reapplied. So we've also gone round the car before this primer stage has gone on and carried out a first stage of seam sealer feeding. So that's what we've done down these sides here. And what that does is just smooths out any steps, any harsh steps between panel replacements and the inner seal. So this is the new part of the RACP. And it, like I say, it wasn't very well sealed in. It, was, it had been quickly sealed, I believe. So we take much more care and attention and it might take us two or even three passes through the vehicle each time having a, a, a paint on top of it. You can see we've got some here which is still drying at the moment, just going over the panel edges to try and make them smooth them out. So once our sprayable seam sealer goes on, it's much more flat and flowing and gonna give a better weather protection rather than a stepped panel joint. You can see we've got some going on here. We've just added to the very lips. It's this white item here, which is the sealer. This is the brushed version that we're just feeding in gently to again, make sure that our sprayable seam sealer, which goes on later on, is gonna roll over those edges and not give a harsh sudden stop. So that's been going on, especially at the rear as well. So what had happened at the rear when the RACP was added at BMW, they had uh, seam sealed over all of this joint here and completely covered these castellations or flutes, which are natural ventilations and drain out points for the internal cavities. And you will get moistures building up in those cavities. You won't necessarily get rainwater in them, but you will get moisture that collects or condensates and then wants to come out. And all that was fully sealed up. So there was a risk that any moisture was trapped in there if it was in there and it couldn't escape. So we've dug out all of that to make them original and have those flutes available. And then you can see where they aren't fluted, where the spot welds are, we're putting the white seam sealer in, just brushing that in gently to try and make it as original as possible and filling in any small little gaps that BMW may have missed or could have improved at the panel joint replacement time. So that's on the RACP. To be honest, that is really where we've mainly had to do some work. Um, the other parts of the car that have remained undisturbed, for example, these brackets up here, these fuel tank strap brackets, and the bulkhead, uh, fuel tank area bulkhead panels, which don't have anything on, these are all fine and fantastic. It's mainly around where that panel replacing, we are just improving steadily and sh surely um, the finish on that. So it doesn't look much now, but mark my words, when the sprayable seam sealer is on, it will be a much nicer finish. We've been doing these for so many years that we know the benefits and improvements of where to put seam sealer first of all on this stage and like I say around these edges here where some of the water can be kicked up into the uh, train arm pocket area to just make a nice improvement. So out into the wheel arches as well there's certain areas where we've already done a seam sealer finish on the overlapping panels where they are again where the RACP meets the wheel arch some of these areas were exposed where it's a double pinched overlap panel and there was a visible join line. So now we've smoothed that out like the BMW seam sealer was originally when the car was finished. Uh, the wheel arches have had work as well and been, uh, re well, not repaired, but corrosion removal. So inside the CSL wheel arch, which is quite unique, there is a shortened version of the inside wheel arch panel. Basically it was cut shorter at the factory uh, to allow the, the outer panel to lit round and be folded 180 completely flat so it had better wheel and tire clearance because obviously it runs a wider tire 265 uh, a wider rim and also a lower offset rim so the factory had to do this option much like the e39 and 5s and what we find is corrosion gets caught under there because they don't actually have a welded joint to hold the inner panel to the outer panel because the outer the inner panel was caught cut short the outer panel overlaps it and it's just filled with a bonding agent uh, panel bond adhesive at the factory and in there we can find problems and we did on this car on both sides left and right as we do on other CSLs so we've dug out the corrosion in that area and then rebonded those two pieces together so the arches have been investigated and thoroughly attended to and then going down to the underside um, we've got the original seam sealer that's had to be sort of scuffed and flattened out because there are there are areas that the factory seam sealer is a little bit blobby 
Uh, we're not talking about the texture. The texture is always quite good from BMW, but we're talking about areas that are sometimes finished with a human by hand brush in certain areas that the robots didn't fully cover. And there are areas sometimes you even find where a human worker with a brush would actually just wipe the end of their brush on the seam sealer and just clear it off before they went onto the next vehicle. We commonly find that up in these areas here. So we've tidied areas up. You can see here where we've smoothed out some seam sealer because there were some really big fat sections which are just a little bit too high, a bit peaked and wouldn't look that nice once the seam sealer is going over it. So we try to make these as nice looking as possible, which at the moment you're not really seeing because we're still only in a primer state. But there are areas that are going to benefit from what we've been doing and, um, and that will be coming up quite shortly when we move on to the sprayable seam sealer process. So the car has been remasked again. It gets masked, demasked many times during the process of the work being carried out for the different stages, whether it be degreasing, um, whether it be then seam sealer removal or corrosion removal, because sometimes we have to go into the vehicle, sometimes we have to lift the bonnet and then demask, remask. And now we're at the sort of near final mask stage getting ready for the seam sealer prep. So that's where the, the lifting arms are masked as well around the jacking points. We've had the jacking points out and the lifting arms holding a different position of the vehicle so that we can make sure that we've removed any loose corrosion seam sealer and e-coat from behind the jacking pads. Now we're re-putting back onto there. We'll treat those ones separately once the car is painted. And then you can see the seal line has been uh, masked as well. And then moving up into the front section, so it's a really big project, this one. The engine's still in the vehicle, but it's again, it's masked and separated, but we've got all of the front section as well, which has been attended to right into the inner sort of wing area. So we've got chassis leg going that way towards the front bumper of the vehicle, the turret area, the inner wheel arch panels, and then the engine at the moment, there's no subframe on that, that's suspended on our special tooling system. We've made the thinnest system we can create so that it allows us to get into the gaps around here, which normally the subframe would completely cover. Um, we've gone up into the fluted sections up here, which are sort of strengthening pressed pieces for the turret reinforcement because they suffer with corrosion inside those tracks on the E46s. And then going across to the right hand side, a very similar thing up in there as well. So we are just doing our final checks and making sure we're fully masked, making sure any seam sealer brushing first that needs to be done has been done. Look at that, for example, little section just up here on this overlap panel. There's another area, hot spot where they can corrode. We don't want water sitting on that step. So we're putting a small white seam sealer trace around there to make sure that when our seam sealer goes over it, we'll have special tools that go over this area anyway, because we don't want the seam sealer compressing against these two items, which are where the front control arm bush presses. This area here is masked off, but we, what we want is to make sure that um, our seam sealer, like I say, flows naturally. More will become apparent and a bit more obvious at the next stage once we get that seam sealer onto the underside of the vehicle. And if you're wondering why the inside of the tunnel isn't done, well, that's just a Reedish Motorsport tradition. We never paint the inside of the tunnel. Well, because it never ever corrodes, it doesn't get any problems up in that area because it's a hot area because of the exhaust underneath this area and it's covered with a big heat shield um, the main reason is because it gives us a consistent colour match option to, um, to keep on top of our colour creation for each vehicle because we originally used a spectrometer in this area on a CSL it was actually many many years ago to get an exact colour code of the BMW E coat and then that's what we then formulate to then paint on the vehicle underneath after the seam sealer process is done. And why we don't do that is because, like I say, we can get some paint onto this area and know that if we're looking at a good match, it will be very obvious because we've got an unpainted area versus then the rest of the car, which is painted. And then if we're really happy that the paint color is fantastic, we can then go and paint the rest of the vehicle completely underneath and know that the, um, the matchup is all worked out well. This is always one of the most exciting parts, I think, of the underside restorations. Uh, as well as the actual finished effect and being able to hand it over to an owner and see the, the look on their face when they see their car for the first time underneath. This is probably the second most enjoyable part of the process when you get to see it finally protected and fully sealed after all those weeks of bare metalling, tackling corrosion, fabrication, grinding, welding, smoothing, 
so much preparation goes into this stage it's probably very similar to external body paint how uh, people or whether it be house decorating people always say it's in the preparation and that's exactly the same with this it's weeks of work of prep and probably half a day to actually carry out the sealant process whereas if you tried that half a day sealant process on a, a poorly prepared car that had very little prep you'd find that it would wouldn't adhere it wouldn't it would fail probably very quickly but all the build-up work that we've been doing ensures that our restorations do last the test of time and also look extremely OEM in our very biased opinion. Um, so this car already had had the RACP replaced so you may see things like the panel edges that might not look as original as BMW but we have improved on those although the panel fit was great we've then look at back to that clip that we did previous we've carried out a straightforward um, sealer uh, brush in to those joints all around the panel edge to make sure that there's uh, no chance of moisture or water or salts or anything like that getting into the vehicle and exactly the same in the opposite effect down here where the new RACP meets the boot floor curvature all these at BMW had been blocked up so that had meant there was no way for moisture or even cavity wax that builds up inside there moisture I mean that builds up inside to escape so all these castellated flutes should be open like this and we've painstakingly dug all of the old seam sealer from BMW body shot taking that out to make them look fantastic if you just take a snapshot of that picture there and then and there and study that I don't think you'll find much difference to uh, to how they probably wanted it to look when they were done at BMW but of course they didn't necessarily get the time from that I worked at a BMW dealer for six years and the times that you're up against are quite staggering actually when you have to do things in a set time um, and I'm really pleased that we don't have that sort of thing here at Reedish Motorsport. We work on quality rather than quantity as such. So we've got the wheel arches here, which are just as good as the underside in many ways. Turret, no corrosion, a full seam seal weld down the left hand side, which we've been doing for years on our undersides and our RACP work, which holds the RACP strongly to the wheel arch panel. And we've got the wheel arch area up here, which is fully protected and resealed along with new studs, resistance welded studs up there. Very similar on the right hand side. Again, if you scan back to the previous clips, you'll remember where there was an OEM weld, well, OEM closed wheel arch like the CSLs have, but we saw corrosion color at the very top near 12 o'clock. So once digging that out, we find a, a, a quite a surprising amount of corrosion all the way around there. So it's had to have a detailed repair in that area to make sure that there's no further problems later down the line. Turrets are great and so are the side edges and the hole for the fuel tank ventilation pipes to come through. Battery box sections have come out really smart as well. You wouldn't necessarily ever know that there was a bracket on that area there I don't feel. That's because the blending process goes absolutely all the way to the back of the vehicle whether it be the very rear panel up here or very underside of the battery tray. Nothing is on the car. There are no bumpers, no shock absorbers, no wiring. There isn't anywhere for, um, well, nothing can hide effectively. It's completely apart. So turrets, uh, spring purchase were always good and everything on the RACP was good on this car because it had been replaced several years back by BMW. The brackets were fine and were able to be reused. Um, and then we moved on to the turret, the, sorry, the rear tray and arm pocket area. And at the moment they've got our special tools on there. This is something, it's an old rear tray and arm section that we use to make sure that the seam sealer doesn't get onto the contact points of the um, rear tray and arm cradle. So when that's fitted up, it doesn't compress any sealer which could cause a crack or sealer issue. Um, we paint that section behind there once we take our tools off manually in the same color, but it's a, it's a thin traditional paint. So like I said, there's nothing that gets compressed in that area. We've carried on before doing the sealing and making sure that the edges of the seam edges where the, uh, the rear axle carrier panel had been welded into the seat panel, the inner seal section, we'd made sure that those have been sealed, even though again, it wasn't our job, we're just going over to make the job as best as possible. Um, and it's the same with the right hand side. They're, these are very well sealed cars. Um, and we've got the rear seal section where we've gone out to the seal and we've carried out our seal. So the car has been fully painted and there is a paint join behind the 
as every car that ever gets painted, it's likely to have the paint join here behind the side skirt area. So that's exactly where we're gonna bring ours to and have brought ours to. And remember, this is the area we had to cut open the seal to not only bring down the jacking point because it was creased, but also to weld our reinforcement section in there. So that's been done and looking good. It's not very obvious that that's all been apart and reinforced, so I'm pleased with that. Seal sections are looking really smart, straight. You still see that excellent shine and textured finish of our seam sealer, sprayable seam sealer. At the same time, you've got all the stamped pressings of the OEM floor pan, which tell you it's not a thick, gloopy sealer. Uh, it's actually very dry, it's a two-part system, and I always like to promote that by showing the fact that with clean gloves on, you can rub that quite strong and nothing's gonna come off, it isn't gonna break. It's abrasive resistant, it's water salt resistant, so it's gonna be well, holding up very well. And again, the center of the um, tunnels, as I explained previously, isn't something that we coat, we leave that. It's sort of a Reedish Motorsport trademark, I suppose, or trait. And that just always gives us that chance and opportunity to make sure that the color we're using on the vehicle which is a copy of the transmission tunnels on a CSL, is as close as we can per per get it, basically. And we feel that is the case in this one as well, much like all of them. So we've got the underside central section, which you can see, again, not wanting to repeat too much, but the stamped pressings of the floor pan and the chassis legs are all perfect and visible. There's nothing um, loose in terms of sealer. The underside of the vehicle is well protected the special tool is on the gearbox to hold the gearbox and therefore the engine in its position. The transmission tunnel supporting um, sound insulation is pinched just gently and then protected and wrapped so we can get behind it. So when it's then loosened and put onto there, it'll be a great contrast. Our underside olive green color against the black heat shield insulation. And it doesn't just stop at the underside central. We've been right up to the front on this vehicle as we do with full underside restoration. So left-hand side chassis leg and seal sections can be seen here. Again, with that texture, when you see the reflection, you get that idea of what the BMW factory sealer was like, which is here, a texture on it. And then the same with ours here. And then go forward to the front of the vehicle. You've got the left-hand side turret section, which is fully protected, the chassis leg, the turret support, the wheel arch panels. A lot of that is hidden by plastic wheel arch liners, but it still needs to be protected before. Some of it had seam sealer, especially in the central sections which aren't protected by a wheel arch liner, but some of the outer side doesn't have seam sealer. And certainly these areas here, the chassis leg didn't previously have seam sealer, nor did these areas. And that's why they always corrode in those areas. So we make an improvement, a sensible improvement in those areas. And then we've got, again, another set of special tools here. This is uh, an exact shape of the front control arm bush or lollipop bracket where it touches and compresses onto the chassis leg where we block that section off so that we don't seal it behind. Now, when we take that off, we obviously then paint that area in this color, but non seam sealer. So it won't compress or crack or risk any seam sealer movement. And we've still got our special tools on there at the moment, which these ones are the very, very small minor ones that we use. The smallest we can get away with is holding the engine in position, but yet giving enough access around the backs here so we can get paint, remove corrosion, paint, prime and seal, and then later wax. Whereas if you leave the, trans the subframes on there, they're so large and they come right out to the end of here, you'd always miss things around that area or wouldn't be able to get as much out and protect as much as this section here. So that's where we are with the right-hand side. Sorry, left-hand side. This is the right-hand side, exactly the same style of finish as it's all done in one go. It takes several hours to reseal the underside of a vehicle in this and then carry out the specialist color coating as well. But you can see it includes the bulkhead section there as well and where we go up to the chassis legs, which are all masked off so there's nothing can get out into the engine bay area, including the, um, the 
anti-roll bar pivot section because we found a small amount of corrosion on the chassis leg up here where the lower water hose had been rubbing so we'll make sure that that had been coated and then we will seal it like we have done and we might even put a, a clear transparent abrasion resistant item so when the hose goes on to that location it can't really rub through the seam sealer so that is the underside seam sealed and it's uh, it's been curing for a few days now so we're not far off moving to the next stage which is cavity waxing extensive cavity waxing and that's not just through the rear areas that say had more corrosion than the fronts it will be through areas that there might not have even been any corrosion problems with like that reinforcement there for the bulkhead slash floor pan area the seals will be heavily waxed because especially on the right hand side rear we've done fabrication welding work in that location the chassis legs will be the transmission turret uh, tunnel support brackets will be the front legs all of those voids cavities and gaps and tons at the back of the car will be all heavily cavity waxed next to protect the car even further. Here's all the powder coating items, well the old parts that are going off for powder coating. 30 items all laid out as per they were fitted to the vehicle roughly. So right down at the rear end we've got rear anti-roll bar and brackets, uh, V-brace, the carbon canister bracket. We've also got the rear brake disc backing plates, the subframe stop washers, the diff carrier, trailing arms, trailing arm cradles upper spring arms, the aluminium cast ones, then we've got the push rod, the fuel filter cover, the fuel tank straps, exhaust brackets, uh, gearbox cross member, and then moving towards the front of the vehicle, we've got the front reinforcement plate, front anti-roll bar, front cross member, front brake disc backing plates, and the front kingpins. Now you might notice the brake disc backing plates are brand new, that's because um, we don't powder coat the old ones, they're always very flimsy, too thin to reuse, and therefore we start with brand new ones and we make sure that uh, those are coated rather than just putting those new ones on from BMW. They come looking new with that black finish on them, but that's very thin. It doesn't last long at all. So we powder coat those to make sure they're well covered. And those 30 items will come back new as per the customer's specification, whether it be OEM colors um, like, uh, well, standard blacks matte blacks and um, like what we call a titanium finish which is closely matched to the aluminium colour or some people go for bigger more interesting colours I mean that's controversial though some people don't like the the bright colours and they want it to be OEM nowadays we notice that lots more people who do the underside restoration with us do stick for the OEM colours I think as the cars have matured and, and gone up in value as well and look at them as a sort of an investment purpose an OEM colour scheme is, is quite appealing. So there's many ways to do this. We're quite open to all sorts of different ideas and, uh, and if you've got anything in mind, just let us know. We can always uh, make it happen. Here's a good selection of the new fixings and brackets that we're gonna be using on the CSL restoration. We've got the intersection, so up here, We've got all the brackets that we're going to be using. Now this, when I say all the brackets, these are all the ones that are going to be sent away to a specialist company that's going to zinc coat them for us. Um, so these are one of the early stages of components that we buy from BMW. Uh, it's absolutely loads of parts, part numbers. I think once we get the, the final order, which is what we call um, everything, or all other, so that's all the plastics, the bushes, the wheel bearings, all those things. Um, there's some 384 part numbers that we order for the restorations nowadays. And these, just to reiterate, these are the items that are going for zincing. So brackets across that section up there, and then down here, these are all the fixings. Anything with a thread on it, whether it's a bolt, nut, um, they're all laid out as they've just arrived. So we're gonna get these opened up take them out of the bags and then put them on the floor ready to um, send away for zincing. That's all the nuts and bolts opened out of those bags that we just looked at. You can see there's hundreds of fixings here. These are all brand new, uh, so we're gonna be zincing these in a yellow sort of zinc passivated finish. Um, the copper nuts we won't be, those are genuine BMWs and just put those in the fixing order just to show you what we're gonna be renewing and replacing. Now we could zinc the old parts but the old parts obviously have corrosion on them um, to some form. Some are heavily corroded, some are lightly corroded and the zinc finish doesn't really work with corroded fixings so it's always better to start with new steel components. That's why we've got these fixings all from BMW. I won't list them all out because they are hundreds and although there's multiple and quantities of them 
you can see there that it's going to be a fantastic finish using brand new fixings for example and that would be exactly the same with the brackets as well so we've got large brackets now there's a couple of aluminium pieces here for example the front uh, under tray reinforcement brackets these won't be able to be zinc because they're aluminium and um, they are a different one just in case you didn't or weren't aware the CSL has a different one on the left hand side that's the CSL one and the only difference is that it's got a scallop out of here to allow the low pressure secondary air pipe to come through and they add a bit of material because otherwise it'd be too weak so just again that's the standard M3 one for the left hand side and that's the difference on the CSL one so we'll be using a CSL because this is a CSL restoration and then we've got uh, steel components here some of these have started coming in um, these top reinforcement plates are going to be used for they're for pull road package um, not fitted for UK cars but again they fit for the Paul Road market, so probably Eastern European market. I think that Paul Road package was an option code for vehicles. And they are just a bolt on um, bracket which goes on top of the top mount and spreads the load into the turret. They're going to be zinced along with all these lovely brackets as well. So we've got sorts of things from the exhaust system, anti roll bar, wheel bearing, brake flexes, drive shaft, anything and everything that's a bracket, i.e., that hasn't got a fixing in it, because we've got fixings over here. That's one order of fixings, and this is the order of brackets. That's a couple of thousand pounds worth of parts just there in the brackets and the fixing order. And this is stage one of the reassembly process. So here's a lot of the parts laid out that we're gonna be fitting back to the CSL restoration. This isn't absolutely everything. We've still got uh, BMW parts to arrive, um, including plastics and th under trays and things like that. But we've got a majority of the components. We've got all the powder coated items, which were 27 pieces that we sent away to be powder coated in OEM colors. So we've got a, a matte black finish for the steel components and what we call titanium silver for the aluminium components. And then along with that, we've got the customer supplied KW suspension and the AP brakes, rear calipers, front calipers. There will be brake discs and bells and brackets in here at some stage as well. Um, we've got the differential, which is what we call an option six, which is a very cool uh, wave track with a 3.91 ratio as well. And then we've got the really exciting parts, which are also all the fixings, the nuts, the bolts, all brand new from BMW. We haven't coated any of the old parts. These are brand new metal fixings, including the brackets as well, right down to the smallest level. So even things like speed clips and self-tapping screws, there's absolutely hundreds of them and these are all brand new and are just fantastic. If you get interested and are quite geeky like us with all things like this, then this is absolute heaven for somebody restoring a vehicle. Fixings for the front axle, rear axle assemblies and even uh, hose clips there. That's something quite interesting and new. And we've got brackets for the exhaust system the Xenon equipment, the front suspension. These are what they call pull road package plates, which go on top of the top mounts in the front turret to spread the load. And then you've got things like handbrake assemblies. We've got the gearbox, drain plugs, filler plugs, all sorts of things you can think of, brackets. Basically went through the entire parts catalog and ordered everything fixing wise that was listed on the vehicle. And lots of them are so small here. I forget how many individual part numbers there were and then there's obviously multiples of those part numbers but even things like that that's the handbrake spring pin system you've got brake flexi pipe spring brackets then there's brakes flexi side brackets uh, torque screws there's pretty much everything you could ever want in here for rebuilding an E46 we've got uh, some of the bushes just here, we've got a lot of the ball joints, wheel bearings and bushes, like I say, still to arrive from BMW. But that is what it looks like underneath the car, laid out in exactly the order and orientation that it would be fitted. Front end items up here, rear end at the back, so we've got subframe, upper arms. The only thing we haven't arrived just yet is the camber arms, they'll be coming in very shortly. Trailing arms, we've got brake disc backing plates and these get modified before we coat them as well. So if you've ever tried to install powder coated items, you know it adds a very minor thickness of layer. So we modify, slightly open out the centers before carrying out the um, install of the powder coat so that they know they assemble. We don't have to file anything once they've been done. And then we've got V-brace, push rod, 
the uh, exhaust brackets, gearbox cross member, the fuel tank strap brackets, fuel filter, under tray, front reinforcement, new front wishbones here, front control arm bushes, king pins, front CSL 30.8 hollow anti-roll bar, the front suspension uh, cross member, front brake disc backing plates, uh, anti-roll bar brackets on a CSL, they're steel and they're um, black from factory, whereas the other non M3 CSLs are aluminium. So it's all very specific, very laid out to exactly um, how you would imagine one of these builds goes. And very shortly, we're going to start coating these. So it's going to be a special G-Technic coating being applied to all of these items, which are uh, going to give it even more longevity and allow waters and mud and anything that gets on the car just simply bead off, simply like it would be on the underside, on the top paint of your vehicle. And there is the vehicle up on the lift, directly above all the parts. And shortly it will be going for the reassembly stages. If you're enjoying this video, please do like, subscribe and hit the bell to get notified of upcoming videos. We've got the manifolds back from Zircatech now and we're just going to be getting ready to install them on the CSL. We also sent some of our stock manifolds as well because we are an authorised uh, dealer for Zircatech. So we get these done. We've actually got a few as well over here for stock. And then we're just weighing them just to confirm that we've got CSL ones because as people know, the CSL and also the later models are um, are lighter so we're first of all going to weigh the rear section now the green tag ones are to identify that those are m3 so that is 1.996 so pretty much two kilos obviously it's got a coating on it but you can still tell the big difference is in the wall thickness of the material and then this is a csl version because as you can see it's 1591 so it's pretty much 400 grams lighter than its traditional M3 one. Now we're going to go with the front section of the manifold, which again with the green tag on it, this is one that we've already weighed, which tells us it's going to be a normal M3 at 2.5473 even. So just over two and a half kilos. And then the CSL version is only 2.89 so again about half a kilo 500 grams ish so if you add that saving up over the pair of manifolds you've got about a 900 gram almost a kilo saving there it's time for cavity waxing on the csl uh, we've got um, all the cavity wax prepared it's an aerosol based system and we're going to use our half meter wand which is the 500 mil nozzle which is an injection was nozzle which allows the uh injected wax to get through into various different areas and cavities and what we should start seeing is the uh, the cavity wax starting to drain out so even though we've got a wiring box there still fitted you'll start seeing that it will come out of the drain section it's what we've just done there by going through this big grommet which is a 35 mil hole it coats all the back of the um, the trailing arm pocket area to make sure that those sections are going to be well protected. It comes through obviously other openings and holes there. We've got it coming out now of the drain seal so that means that the seal section has now got some in on the lower level and we'll just keep going through it in different areas over the next hour with lots of um, litres. I think it's sometimes eight litres or eight, uh, eight it's a good near it's a good i think it's about eight liters of cavity wax we can put in full vehicles full underside vehicle restorations which obviously go all the way from the vehicle rear center and then go up to the front as well there's the chassis legs central transmission tunnel sections there's always lots of areas to go through anything hollow or cavitied or sectioned always gets protected especially the brackets as well so all these brackets would be done individually we'll go through the front edge of the racp now that's the right front racp mounting point so we'll go through this standard grommet here and then we'll just see where this comes out so remember it's half a meter one with a special 360 degree fan head on so we'll be going past the halfway point there and hoping to see some of this cavity wax start draining through and it's not just being shot in a single direction it's a fan head so it sprays in a 360 degree pattern. So whether it be a horizontal or a vertical face or a curved face, it will be getting the entire section of that boxed piece um, protected. And it creeps for several hours, it goes on and um, before it starts solidifying and then eventually does become a solid wax which is uh, obviously how cavity waxes work. But we'll be working through the car, like I say, going through the rear of the RACP section. We'll do another one as well whilst we're here, 
through this section. And again, the key is to get past the halfway point. There's the halfway point. We want to make sure cavity wax is coming out at least from that middle one, but possibly past the halfway sections. And then that allows us to make sure we can do an overlap system. So when we go later on in through this hole, we know that we've gone past what we call the overlap stage. And then we're going to be getting plenty of wax into all the different cavities and hollow sections. And this is just from underneath the vehicle. We want to be also going inside the vehicle, under the boot floor and under the rear seat panel. Tons of cavities and holes in there that are areas that you can't get to from underneath. So things like the, um, the boot floor section, then you've got chassis legs inside the car. There's all sorts of areas that we'll go into. And we'll even go as far and as detailed as the spring pockets as well. Little dead end perch there. Those two there that go up to the inner chassis leg areas. We'll be going through the wheel arch grommets, um, the very top ones and the front lower ones as well. And we'll be going through the seal panel sections and that bulkhead, that false bulkhead there. And then brackets, like I say, behind all those, behind the chassis legs. It will just keep going until we've got the car fully waxed internally. So then it's protected internally as good as it is externally. Once the cavity wax uh, creeping and drying was completed, we've been able to get on with the reassembly work, which uh, as always means the brake pipes. That's one of the first things that have to go on because they go behind the fuel tank. So it's a service joint up in the uh, sort of engine bay area, just up here, which we'll be connecting soon. And that's using genuine BMW pipes, which are black steel and powder coated or they have some sort of plastic coat on them and we follow the lines parallel to the brake pipes and the fuel vent pipe as best as possible to make them very neat and original looking all in their clipping points new fuel filter new plastic clips up here and then also the zinc section clips there as well which make a nice contrast and then new brake pipe uh, sorry fuel pipe sections here for the main supply which comes over from the right hand side of the tank down and then the return one which goes up here back up to the left hand side of the tank zinced hardware which is the hose clips as well um, and then the brake pipes go up through the tank sort of bulkhead fuel tank area and then go around the tank come out on the left hand side the tank is still being cleaned which we're going to show in a minute through the clipping points here one goes over to the left hand side bracket and then the other one sweeps up and always follows the parallel routing of the brake, uh, the fuel vent pipe system, which always changes at the service joint there, changes to a blue system and then goes off to the carbon canister, which we're going to be installing shortly. So it's all new clipping points, the double black one there, the single white one there. And then just look how nicely these zinc sections of the brake fixings are. Normally these come from BMW with a sort of silver coating, which doesn't seem to last too long. So we have them zinced to make them last longer, even the service joint just there. So everything's looking really neat. The fuel tank is in, so we've done an initial clean on it. It's actually a three stage clean. So first of all, it gets cleaned with soapy water because they always have some sort of mud or dirt or dust on them. Then we do a clean with quick detailer to basically clean and dry the plastic. And then we do a 303, aerospace 303 plastic protectant which has gone on on the right hand side of the tank and also over the saddlebag area about to there and in this section hasn't yet been done you can see the difference you always have scratches on this plastic um, but there's uh, a definitely a dull sort of dried out plastic look when compared to this side which looks a lot nicer with the aerospace 303 on it we've got the powder coated fuel tank straps as well with the uh, zinc hardware and also the rubber grommets and the metal sleeve which are going into the bracket. You can even see some of the cavity wax which is there from when we waxed earlier on in the process behind the brackets, something that BMW don't do but we make sure we do. Um, and then they go on to the front brackets just up here so we've got the rubber buffers so that there's never any metal on metal. And that's looking really nice now. Um, so that's going to be carried on and we'll clean up that fuel tank on the left hand side, protect that section and then we'll just carry on with the rebuild process. Assembly begins on the front of the vehicle or continues should I say. So we've got uh, a few things to do on the engine. We've got a little bit of an engine oil moisture or leak there which we need to investigate as most cars do so we'll be solving that shortly but the front cross member has gone on with new engine mounts a very clean steering rack 
We'll be doing a paint touch up on the end of the cap just there. It doesn't warrant a whole new steering rack replacement just for that little section. So that'll be painted. Then we've got the zinc hardware for the bolts that go through the subframe and also the ones that go into the cross member itself. And then we've got the zinc hardware bracket for the Xenon level equipment. We've got the little wiring boxes here, a new plug connector on the Xenon uh, potentiometer bracket because those ones are always brittle and the pins, uh, the plug holders always snap. New front control arms and front wishbones. All of the heat shields are in place. So we've got the underside chassis leg one. We've got the bulkhead one up here. And then we've got the side of the chassis leg one up there as well. You see lovely cavity wax here dripping out of the seams where we've cavity waxed all of the chassis leg area as well. Fantastic to see how much is um, protected inside. We've even got new steering rack pipes these ones just here, which um, are still available from BMW, and they just take and distribute or even the, uh, the, the, the steering um, pressure from one side of the rack to the other. So those ones are re uh, replaced as well, which look excellent. And then new high pressure power steering pipe, which is fitted here. Now we're just waiting for uh, the fixing and also gonna be doing some localized painting on this hose because there's a little bit of corrosion just showing on the edge of the hose, but other than that, the hose is in excellent order. We've got new uh, power steering supply hose, this one here, brand new, along with the zinc clipped as well. And then going towards the, oh, manifolds as well, I forgot to show, the Zircatec coated uh, performance manifolds in volcanic black are now on as well, which look excellent, with all new gaskets up there and the copper nuts. You can see the zinc fixings here that again we're using on the chassis legs as well. New lower steering coupler, the engine mounts are also new as well. The gearbox cross member has gone on with new uh, rubber mounts. And then as we go towards the rear of the vehicle, more has been happening at the rear. If I stand back and show you now, the uh, rear axle assembly has started to be uh, installed. So we've got a heat shield on at the moment. Um, then we've got the powder coated subframe assembly which is the OEM black finish. And then the front, the rear upper spring arms, which are uh, titanium silver effect, which matches uh, closely to the sort of standard bare cast aluminium that these upper arms would have been. And, um, and obviously they are, when they are cast aluminium, they are bare aluminium. So over the years, they become quite corroded and crusty and powdered. So with a powder coat smooth finish on it, they don't deteriorate. Uh, we'd already looked at the brake pipes up there that are already looking very nice. So now we've got um, subframe bushes, new rubber subframe bushes installed in four points of the subframe, along with the powder coated washers and the zinc hardware. And then the Xenon equipment is all being installed, which looks excellent because it's that lovely contrast in zinc color brackets, bolts, little M5 bolts into the potentiometer, the potentiometer arm bracket, which then goes across to hold the drop link and then the top bracket which goes onto the top spring arm. And this is uh, how they should operate. They should be able to articulate in any motion because it's a ball and socket joint top and bottom. But very commonly they seize because these items here are all just steel items from BMW without a coating on them. And then the ball in there corrodes normally and then seizes the plastic socket and then you end up getting a bend in it. But these ones are fantastic. They should be like that, completely vertical so they'll operate nicely. Just starting to put the anti-roll bar brackets on the top as well. And the hoses here for the AP brakes that are going on. Um, the front push rod is on as well, which is this section, which is what the V-brace goes into. It's also a supporting washer system for the underside of the subframe bushes. So um, there's the zinc studs and the nuts in there as well. The brand new CSL camber arms are also installed as well. Uh, these ones are still available and the difference with these compared to a normal M3 is one that they're tubular um, but secondly they've got a ball joint up on the inside up here whereas the normal M3 one has a rubber bush and also down at this end they have a much wider system of camber adjustment eccentric bolt actually taken from the E39s so you are able to get slightly more camber on these compared to the slightly smaller M3 ones. So that's about it at the rear. The differential is in, which is uh, also a really nice upgraded item. So that is a Wavetrack LSD with a 3.91 BMW Motorsport Crime Wheel and Pinion. 
uh, with obviously all new bearings and oil seals. The backlash has been uh, set between the Crimewell and Pinion um, and a new rear case cover which gets the new uh, bushes up there and also a new front bush in the underside. So later on we're going to be starting on the trailing arm assemblies which then go on the outboard side of the rear axles. I know I keep going on about it in this video, but you're gonna to have to put up with it because we absolutely love the zinc finish on all of these fixings. All of these new fixings make a huge difference anyway. And then when you zinc them, they just look stunning in our opinion. And uh, working through the whole car's worth of fixings to find each individual BMW item, which we know which item is which without being too big headed. That's a 652, for example, which is a, um, a V-brace bolt. And uh, there's all sorts of things, handbrake, shoe, pin clips even jubilee clips with zinc it's just fantastic and like i've said if you're a nerd and like stuff like this like we do this is absolutely heaven working with this sort of stuff all clean all fresh and gives that amazing contrast when you put it against the underside e-coat color or the black or the silver powder coating we're now on to building up some of the front assembly so putting the kw club sport specialist uh, speed hunters coilover suspension on but before we put that on we're going to put the reinforcement plates on these come from bmw on what we call the poor road package so we've had these zinced and now what we're doing is spraying a transparent wax so it looks white but it will dry transparent and then we're going to offer that up on top of the strut assembly because anywhere we're touching metal onto anything of the chassis that's perfect we want a nice cushion and a bit of wax protection, so it's a weathering sort of protection as well. Acts as a little bit of a seal, and now that assembly will be gently lifted up onto the turret and connected in. So in this picture, you get to see some of the steering rack, tie rods, gaiters, front arms, uh, subframe, the wiring, brake hoses, lower arms, and then the front hubs, so that'd be kingpins, backing plates, wheel bearings, all with zinc hardware, looking fantastic as the front end comes together quite nicely. We've been doing some work in the engine bay on the CSL restoration, installing, first of all, a power steering cooler, um, also an air conditioning radiator, or what's known as a condenser, that had a leak on it, and most E46s do. It's one of the front pieces, so it gets a lot of debris, stones, and all sorts of things. So we're doing some work in the engine bay now. Uh, that includes, uh, the owner wanted the CSF uh, radiator so it's protected at the moment with a bit of our cardboard but that is installed so that is an upgrade radiator we're also going to be doing the CSF oil cooler down at the bottom as well shortly um, but we noticed a few things that could be improved in the engine bay and seeing as we're doing a restoration it made sense to be in that area so we know um, the engine is in fantastic condition and looking very very new but the alternator had a pulley on it which was quite corroded it didn't match the rest of the car uh, in terms of engine, engine bay, things like that. The alternator casing was okay, but we've taken out the alternator just on the bench over here. And although it's a genuine BMW item and the casing's good, the steel uh, front pulley is looking quite corroded. So we're gonna do our best to see if we can get that zinced. Now it won't be as impressive as if you could buy a new pulley, but they're no longer available. You used to be able to buy them, but not anymore from BMW. So they're gonna to have to have this one blasted and then zinced. Um, and then hopefully it will come out as good or as, as close as possible to all the other amazing zinc items that we're putting into the build. Here's the alternator pulley that we're putting back onto the CSL. We can't take the full credit for this. Obviously it's been zinced at uh, our preferred uh, metal finishers. It does look fantastic. This actually wasn't the one that we took off. The one that we took off was far too corroded. If you look back to the video, there was lots of corrosion setting in around here. So we managed to source another one. They're not available from BMW, but this was a secondhand one in excellent condition without corrosion on it. So we had that one stripped and then zinced, and that's gonna make a massive difference to the engine bay on this CSL restoration. So the CSF oil cooler is now installed as well. And we're just getting ready to connect hoses and pipe works up. And uh, we just remembered back to a problem that E46 M3 seemed to suffer with, which is where the lower radiator hose, which goes from the thermostat housing to the radiator, or vice versa, that seems to rub on the chassis legs during engine movement and cause a bare metal effect, which then can corrode. The proof of that is here on the old hose. 
this is corrosion markings which came from the chassis leg. So it's where it's a tight fit already to the leg and then the engine vibrations cause it to rub continuously and, uh, and bare metal it which corrodes. So we've got a solution for that. So um, we're just going to put that back in and show what we're going to do. Um, basically we're going to put some buffage material in there, some self-adhesive foam sheeting. So why I've come to the back is because we're doing exactly the same thing at the back here. So this is the carbon canister and this is the carbon canister bracket and this assembly here um, comes uh, from BMW with a special um, adhesive stuck piece of foam on it to act as a, a sort of a gasket effect Livy so that any water moisture or even any smells don't enter the boot floor cabin. Now when you carry out a powder coating process that all gets blasted off and you can't buy the gasket from BMW so we buy an adhesive backed foam sheet quite a thin piece and we cut that to the exact shape of the or the aperture of the carbon canister bracket and you can't see it because it's fitted now behind this but then it gets installed and acts as that special buffage that we uh, we want to replicate the BMW system. So up here we can see roughly in place is the lower hose and we've got a section cut which Darren's just going to show us now doesn't fit in when you try and slide it up there and that's because that's how tight it is it's a gap where you need to lift the hose away and then slide this foam in so that's the piece of foam that we've cut it's self-adhesive so we're now going to stick that to the chassis leg which then will act as a nice protection barrier for any movement that that hose does uh, do which it will do like all E46 M3s do it won't cause a rubbing effect on the chassis leg or paintwork and then we know it's going to be good for many years to come. Here's a perfect example of what we're trying to combat. This vehicle, E46 M3, is just tipped over 70,000 miles. Uh, so there's nothing um, unusual at all. It's actually low mileage today, but look at that amount of corrosion growing there. Not on this chassis leg, but on this bracket, which is the reinforcement bracket for the front anti-roll bar. All of that corrosion is caused by the lower radiator hose contact. It's such a tight fit, and with the engine moving and rocking, it rubs on the paint which then causes bare metal effect and corrosion to grow. So by what we're doing with putting that pad behind it, uh, is gonna ensure that there's a, a sort of a buffer to take up any movement and it shouldn't go and cause any bare metal paint in the future. If you're enjoying this video, please do like, subscribe and hit the bell to get notified of upcoming videos. More and more items are being assembled onto the CSL restoration as we uh, continue with the rebuild. So lots of very nice components going on. KW, um, I believe they're club sport or competition coilover systems, new drive shafts which are in. At the moment they're being protected. We've not got them fully bolted in, so we have a microfiber around them. Just the same with the lower arms, the CSL genuine new camber arms. All those are protected until the absolute moment of needing them to be uh, sort of visual and shown. Um, all the trailing arms are now on, so I don't think we saw that in the last picture. You can see how nice this powder coat finish is, where you can see the embossed M position here. You get an idea of the new bushes that are in position, uh, the cradles that are powder coated, the zinced fixings, and then all the clipping points for the ABS and pad wire sensors. And then a nice touch is all of the zinced uh, handbrake assembly as well. So we've got hub nuts, which are still going to be uh, needing to be done once we do the drive shaft installation finally. Uh, we've also got new wheel bearings in there, brand new hubs or drive flanges as we call these, genuine BMW handbrake shoes, and then a full fitting kit of handbrake accessories. So that's the springs, which are also zinc finished. Uh, the adjusting wheels, which are greased inside the springs and the um, backing plate bolts just behind their shoe there and also this item here where the handbrake cable comes through and then the pivot mechanism as well all zinced because those badly corrode the silver fixing finish from BMW doesn't seem to last a great amount of time normally so um, that's looking really smart we know the heat shield was on previously when we last looked at it anti-roll bar is now on as well so it's obviously the CSL it's the larger one the 22.5 mil which is one mil bigger than a normal M3 which is 21.5 powder coated um, brackets and then also the zinc bolts the 101s which are the socket cap bolts as well um, here we've got lower camber bolts as well the eccentric ones fitted in that position with the ball joints also in there the braided hoses 
along with the zinc brackets and the clip. Uh, so it seems that they've been assembled, not by us, but when those plastic bosses got put on at the factory where they make the hoses, it looks like they've put them on the wrong side because it, the only way the clips fit on this model, in case anybody points it out, is on the back position rather than they on that position. So it's not a thing that we've done, it's just something, a different way of fitting them as a requirement because they've been put on the back way. And then we've got the differential in position, which is again the 3.91 along with the um, the wave track assembly. The front push rod is on with new hardware. We'd already seen that the Xenon system up here was all renewed and looking amazing. And then we've got the fuel filler system, the fuel vent or carbon canister area up here. Those nuts were zinced, which also retains the nylock in case anybody is wondering. And then even so little uh, detail, so high detail is this little bracket. Ne never even seen, but still, it was a steel bracket. So we had that zinced as well, right down to the speed clips, which are um, just super, super anal from us. But we love making sure that there's as good as protection as possible on these areas, actually better than some of the BMW fixings from factory. Right hand side's much the same. We're just waiting from one back ordered hose here to connect that T-piece. We even had that T-piece zinced along with all of the clipping points and the, the special clips though. They don't, in this location up here, uh, the OEM clips are these style, which are the sort of crimp together clips compression fit clips rather than Jubilee clips. So we've gone for all the original BMW ones in that location there. Um, waiting on a prop shaft. This CSL is having a brand new BMW genuine prop shaft as well. So there will be zero driveline clunk, we believe, in this model. A new diff rebuild, new drive shafts and a uh, prop shaft, which will get you a, a front guibo coupling, the center bearing, and also the rear CV joint as well. Brake lines and things like that we'd already looked at. They were already on, manifolds are on. Much more has gone into the front end section now. And the side of the engine is being cleaned because we had a bit of an oil leak in that area previously, which we believe we've identified. And then we've got the new sticker. These are the replacement stickers. So the original ones were orange from BMW. Now when you order it under part number, it comes through as a white one, slightly different. It used to have writing on it, now it's got pictures. So that's in that position as we, uh, as we found it. And then the front end, so we've got front control arms, wishbones, Xenon equipment system, whether it be brackets, potentiometers, and front mounting points. The front KWs are on, also with the zinced uh, reinforcement plates, which look wonderful up there, and are gonna give a nice amount of protection. Front wheel arch liners are in as well, which look really fresh and smart, especially with the contrasting uh, fixings, which again are the zinc gold color side clips are in, front wheel bearings and hubs are on, back in plate assemblies, tie rods, steering rack, steering hoses. So we had to replace a few more steering hoses in the end because we found that the cooler uh, system hoses were all seized together up at that fixing joint just up there. So to replace any of those, we had to replace the cooler, which made sense also whilst we had the radiator and oil cooler assembly out because we were changing the radiator for the CSF along with the oil cooler, which is now CSF. And also we found at that point, the air conditioning condenser was badly affected and leaking. So all that assembly was renewed, like I say, along with the power steering cooler, which then allowed us to change the power steering uh, return hose, that one there that goes back from the cooler to the reservoir and previous to that the one that comes from the rack going down to the cooler itself obviously the high pressure one gets replaced because that's the one the 103 for right hand drive cars which always has a problem and seems to leak after many years of use so that one was done as well we'd done the supply hose previously going from the reservoir to the pump so that one was new so actually all of the pipes for the power steering system have now been replaced which is excellent We'd uh, cleaned some of the other areas, the original plastics for the CSL air ducting that were in good order and remaining. Um, we've changed the aluminium drop brackets. That one's CSL unique because it's got a section cut out there for the hose for the low pressure system and a little bit extra put onto the back of the bracket. And that one up here, which is normal M3, that one was changed as well. A little bit of buffage pad up there to stop that uh, lower hose um, rubbing and reacting. Now this side's even more complete because we've got the lower wheel arch liners in, so you get an impression if we stand back of what the whole assembly looks like with the wheel arch liners fitted. 
all of the fixings in and the lower section as well. So that's what the other one will look like once we get to that point. Um, so we're gonna be connecting the drive lines together shortly. So that'll be prop shaft to be going on. Then we'll be putting more things like the under trays, the center, heat shields, and then later on the exhaust system. We've got some wonderful new AP brakes for the CSL restoration. Uh, the calipers that have been overhauled are absolutely stunning. Some of the best quality that we've seen for a long time. Also new brackets, new bells, new hardware kit, new discs, new RS29 pads, new hoses, fixings, spring clips, bolts, banjos, things like that. It's gonna make an excellent addition to the uh, already brilliant CSL. And we've got to the end of the process with the final video installment to show the underside in all of its glory after the underside restoration here at Reedish Motorsport. What a transformation. If you scan back to the start of the video and you remember how dark and um, maybe used it, it was, much like majority of cars, they are gonna naturally get dirt and corrosion and all sorts of items which uh, end up building up underneath the vehicle. And it really has gone past the point of um, sort of restoration status. I think it has gone into a new level for us. The quality and the attention to detail are just something that um, we can only sometimes dream of until we actually carry them out and then see how well they turn out for themselves. And bear in mind this vehicle has had only a few thousand miles ago a brand new genuine BMW crate engine completely built and installed by a BMW workshop. So that side of the mechanical components are as good as you're probably ever going to get. Plus the bare metal respray that the vehicles had it really is uh, one of, if not the best CSLs out there. Granted, there may well be some museum pieces or collector's items that haven't got very much mileage on them and don't need to be or wherever be used. But this one that has been used probably will carry on to be used. Uh, I think it is one of the best restored CSLs out there. So I'm going to stop talking now and let you admire all the work that's gone into the restoration of this M3 CSL.
that's the end of the repair now on this M3 CSL. The amazing restoration has been uh, carried out over the last few months. We hope you've really enjoyed the process and we really do enjoy documenting them for uh, the owners and everybody to see. So if you've been inspired by this build and you have a similar idea or plan, uh, whatever BMW it is, and you would like some form of restoration or mechanical refresh underneath, please do give us a call here at Reedish Motorsport. We'll be more than happy to discuss the options and uh, look forward to providing another video for you in the future. Do feel free to share, like, subscribe, hit the thumbs up. It all helps us and our channel, and we will uh, catch you on the next video. Thank you. If you're enjoying this video, please do like, subscribe, and hit the bell to get notified of upcoming videos. Thank you.